What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So today we need to talk about the stress of the US economy and the stress of you, the American people. One of the questions I'm getting quite a bit lately is simply, how are we supposed to make it through this? When we have these debts ju just keep piling up and it's not the US debt, it is consumer debt. That's credit cards, auto loans, mortgages, student loans, and so much more. How do we continue to move forward and pay these down, especially when rates keep rising? And the expectation is they may rise even more. Well, that's what we're gonna to discuss today because that is what many of you have been asking for. One of the things I always ask is if you have any questions whatsoever, ask your questions down in the comment section below and I will try to get to it in a video form. Now, I also ask one other thing, you probably know it's coming. If you enjoy these daily uploads, do me a favor, go ahead, hit that like button and let's continue. This is the article I wanna address. This was sent to me uh, just a little bit ago. It's from Business Insider and it says, America's consumer debt stress is mounting. Mortgage rates top 7%, credit card liabilities hit $1 trillion and now auto loan defaults are on the rise. Well, what do we do? Here's what I can tell you. First off, try to stay out of debt, okay? Everyone says, try to stay away from the bad debt, only get the good debt. The good debt is supposed to be a mortgage, right? Well, here's what I can tell you. Every single debt is considered a bad debt unless that debt produces uh, some type of income. It creates an asset. For example, you go and get a, a loan on a rental property that creates income that would be considered good debt. Going to get a mortgage at 7% so that you and your family can live in a home, that's actually, according to multiple financial experts, is considered bad debt. Now, credit card liabilities are over $1 trillion. Auto loans, their defaults are actually rising. We will address what that number is in just a second. But all this is simply because we continue to spend. We see you know, Joe Schmo out there buying a new car. And so we wanna go and get a new car as well. We see all our friends and family members have moved over the past couple of years and we want to go get something nicer. And so we decide, you know what, 7% isn't bad because the people that we're talking to are saying, you know what, 7% is, is normal. That's what we got, you know, 20 years ago. 7% is actually a good rate. And it, technically it is compared to 3%, it's not a good rate. But here's one piece of advice I wanna give you. If you're waiting for interest rates on a mortgage to be down under 3%, it might not happen again. It might not happen for another 50, maybe 100 years. We don't know, okay? But what we do know is happening is there's a shortage of homes, the rents keep rising, and this is what's pushing many people to go and buy a home right now, okay? Now, I don't wanna give you financial advice on you know, who should buy a home, who shouldn't. You're gonna know your financial situation better than anybody else, so you need to just stick to what you know. But, I wanna show you this. Delinquencies on auto loans are rising again, and this could spell trouble for American consumers, and it will. It says defaults on car loans have risen above pre-pandemic levels to over 2% per the FDIC. And it says steep interest rate increases since early 2022 by the Federal Reserve continue to pinch Americans' wallets. Now, why, do, why am I touching on that? Well, it's for a multi multitude of different reasons. The first one, if auto loans are rising, okay, the delinquencies are rising, what's happening is these people that are, have gotten these loans, which I believe the average loan for a new car is over $700 a month. That's crazy, $700 per month for an auto loan. Now I know a lot of people want a nicer car and especially during the pandemic, it was tough to get a decent car for a good price because everybody was trying to get these cars, getting something new, something bigger. And what was happening is prices just kept going up and they still haven't come down that much since they did rise so quickly. But 
Now all these consumers can't afford to pay their utilities, can't afford to put food on the table because it's just getting so much more expensive. They can't afford the nicer apartment or a new home because they have this auto loan. So what do they do? Well, they try to get rid of it. They understand they can't afford to live their current lifestyle with a high uh, you know, rate, monthly rate for their apartment, with energy costs through the roof, with food costs through the roof, and with an auto loan that is six, seven hundred, eight hundred dollars per month. Now, it's very difficult to pay off credit cards, okay? Especially when credit card rates continue to rise, especially when you need your credit card to be able to go and put food on the table, to go and buy medication. I talked to somebody just the other day, actually a few days ago, and this person told me they sh they they can't afford to pay for their car. So their car sits in their driveway, in, in their apartment, sits in their driveway, and they're just waiting till the bank comes and takes it back. That they, they can't afford it. They can't put fuel in the tank because gas prices have been going back up. They can't afford for the insurance, but they, they have to get the insurance because if not, the, the bank is gonna go and buy their, their, own insur their insurance for them and just tack it onto the loan. So they can't afford all these things, but they continue to put their uh, their uh, insurance on a credit card because that's the only way they can afford it. And because they have to put insurance on their credit card, now they don't have any money on their credit card to go and buy food. And so they've been rationing their food with their, it's a small little family, but they've been rationing their food, I guess for about two months. Now, we're gonna hear more stories like this, but I just want you to understand that the reason why these stories are happening, the reason why these, these outcomes, why consumers are, de are delinquent on their, their loans, why they, they can't afford food, why there's more homelessness now than over the past couple of years, the reason for this is because prices continue to increase. We keep on spending. There's, there's a chance we see additional inflation over the next couple of months. And if that happens, rates are going to rise again you know, through the Federal Reserve, and when that happens, we're gonna see more people lose their jobs. So I'm not here to you know, make you worry. I'm not here to tell you that the sky is falling. I'm here to just warn you of what's happening right now because this is exactly what we've seen. The warning signs have been on the wall for, for multiple months, but now we're all starting to see it come to a close. And when it does, you know, it's gonna be an SHTF moment. You know what's gonna hit the fan. So. I just want you to be aware of what's going on right now when consumers start uh, defaulting on their auto loans and they can't pay for a car and now they can't get to work. Guess what's going to happen? Yeah, it's going to be another SHTF moment. So just wanted to fill you in on what's going on at this time. Again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. But again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.